So hello and welcome everyone to the KMC Controls uh, guest webinar featuring Dense Instruments. Uh, my name is Andrew Reynolds. I'm the video production manager at KMC Controls. And I want to personally welcome you to this uh, December webinar where we have the great opportunity to share this time uh, with one of our trusted partners. Uh, presenting today, uh, we're going to be led by Kevin and Andy from Dent as they kind of guide us through more information on their company and share uh, a look at their product offering as well as their software tools. Uh, and then, like always, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to enter them into the question box as we go through. Uh, we'll try to answer things as we go, but in the interest of time, we're probably going to entertain those afterwards via email. And uh, just so I don't take up any more time, I'm going to get things handed off here. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for, for joining. We're going to take a few minutes to kind of go over uh, Dan Instruments as a company and then the, the meat and potatoes part, really uh, going through our Viewpoint HD configuration tool for our new 12-channel uh, and 48-channel meters to show the simplicity in the configuration install. So Dan Instruments is a, is a, whole, uh, is a privately held company. We've been around for 32 years now. We're headquartered in Central Oregon. And uh, this is kind of the picture of our headquarters and where we're at. All of us sit under one roof, uh, minus two remote salespeople. So you've got engineering, manufacturing, and sales all together. We solely concentrate on energy management uh, products, uh, whether it be our portable data loggers, such as the Elite Pro, or our Power Scout 3037 single phase, and our uh, Power Scout HD series. Uh, the thing that we really love as a company is we try to keep it simple. Uh, the simplicity in our offer means fewer SKUs and a more robust product packed with features. So all of our products are, are, both, are dual protocol with Modbus and BACnet. The new HD series is both Ethernet and serial RS-485. Uh, you can choose any CT choices in any of our offerings solid core, split core, or Rogalskis. Uh, the only major thing that you have to decide when you're using one of our products is really do you want a display or not. Uh, so we try to keep everything really simple with as few part numbers as we can uh, to keep everything going. And one of the nicest things about our products uh, is you can configure all of our products with a laptop uh, with no power landed. So when you get to your job site or before you leave for a job site, uh, you can use the, the dense supplied USB cable to hook up from the meter to your PC, launch our easy uh, Viewpoint HD software that Andy will be going over, and you can actually program the meter just with the power of your laptop. Uh, in the multi-circuit metering, uh, again, we've got two options. We've got a 48 channel or a 12 channel meter. The 48 channel, if you wanna look at it, is 16 three phase meters, and the 12 channel is four three phase meters. In this product offering as well, we do offer a plate only version. If you want to embed the meter in a cabinet, um, one of the other features for these HD meters is they do have pulse inputs as well. Uh, the 12 channel has four pulse inputs, so you have a pulse input for each metering channel. The 48, ironically, has two pulse inputs. Giving you a quick view of the anatomy of the meters, uh, the 48 channel has something very unique to the market. It has two voltage references, so you can pull and measure uh, voltage from two different power supplies and our meters go standard from 90 to 600 volts. And so there's a wide variety of the range in there that you can choose from. Um, again, standard with uh, RS-485 and ethernet. We do have alarm settings, both over and under current and over and under voltage per channel. And we are revenue grade accuracy on these meters. So each channel is 0.2% and that's ANSI certified C12.20. You can configure the meter with the use of our local display, but as you'll see going forward, we will have a more robust way to do that, which is the Viewpoint HD software that ships free with each meter. Uh, one of the other things that is nice about our meters is the high voltage cover, the red cover that you see on your screen there, that is basically a separator so that 
in the installation world, the person that will land the meter on the wall and land power to the meter isn't always the same person that's going to come behind and land the CTs and configure it. So you can actually use, you can actually land the power to the meter and put that high voltage cover uh, on and leave it for however long it takes the commissioner to come back and it's completely safe. It's IP30 rated and so there's no way that anybody can access live power once that cover is installed. One of the cool things about the dent products for the PSHD line is it no longer requires a box inside of a box solution uh, in some of the other multi-circuit meters out in the field and even our legacy product you would need to put the meter inside of an enclosure uh, we've designed this particular product to accept one inch EMT conduits there's three knockouts in the top and three in the bottom on the 48 uh, so you can run one inch conduits directly up to that and avoid the costly uh, purchase of a separate enclosure. The three available methods uh, for configuring and checking setup for our meter. Uh, we do have an, a, a local LCD display. That's really for your basic uh, setup. You can check your comms, you can check your addresses from that, but the one in green, the Viewpoint HD, is the desktop application that we're speaking of that we'll kind of dive a little bit more in depth with um, here in the, demo, uh, the demonstration. And we do actually have an, an embedded web server in both the 12 and the 48, so you can use any web browser over Ethernet or the USB to help configure your meter as well. Uh, as I said before, the LCD feature on the front of the meter, you can, you can check values, displays of real-time data. You can do some minor meter configuration and communication setup. The cool thing about it is it does have a tri-color backlight and phase check technology. So when you're setting things up, if you've got uh, something misphased, the color of the LCD will blink and will show you a message as to kind of help narrow some troubleshooting down before you leave the site. If you've got anything uh, flashing that's red, it's just a great indicator uh, to show you that, hey, some, something's wrong. You might want to, to dig into that. I'm going to take that from here, Kevin. Sure. So we're going to switch narrators. Uh, this is Andy, the Director of Engineering, and I'm going to be uh, showing you some static images of the Viewpoint HD configuration tool. Uh, our meter is primarily used in three-phase applications, so the screenshots that I'm going to be showing you uh, are from three-phase applications. And then when we finish this uh, slide deck, I do have in front of me a, a meter uh, plugged into our, our office here running a small heater. So I can show you what the live experience looks like for us as we're just configuring the meter, and that, that really is one of, the, one of the strengths of our product offering. So I'll give you an overview of this uh, Viewpoint HD Windows application here uh, for the next few slides. So the, the first thing that's available is each of the three-phase clusters. Uh, Kevin mentioned that there's 16 and a 48. That data shows up in a format we call the real-time value data, and that's the image that, that you see there over on the right. Um, we have a configuration tool that I'll demonstrate in a few moments that's it's highly visual-driven, so it, it prompts the user to select images from drop-down windows where all the numerology is sort of buried behind the scenes. So you don't have to look at manuals or tables or dip switches to figure out how to configure the meter. You're simply picking a picture of the thing that you bought and clicking at this is what I have and the meter can take care of all the optimization from there. Uh, this is the interface in which you configure the communications. So if you're going to, this is where you'd be selecting baud rate or if you're going to use BACnet versus Modbus, those, those kinds of things can be set through this tool. And then a really effective troubleshooting tool uh, that's available through the interface is the oscilloscope functions. So with this tool, you can use it as a 54-channel digital oscilloscope, and you can get a, a real image of the waveform that you're sampling, which can be really helpful if there's distortion in the waveform 
or the numbers that the meter is, are reporting are confusing in terms of what if it's uh, leading or lagging power factors or, or loads versus sources. That can be uh, confirmed by looking at a couple of the tools, waveform event capture being one of them and, and a phaser plot being another. And then uh, at the bottom of the list there, uh, there's some read-write registers and firmware uploading tools that you can use to update your meter that I'll, I'll there's, we have some further details on slides ahead. So what does that uh, oscilloscope mode look like, which we call here the waveform capture? Um, we try to grab three line cycles and illustrate that. We have solid lines for voltage and dashed lines for currents so that uh, you can, during run times, point this to any of the elements and it will uh, grab a static image if you're making adjustments, you just hit the refresh button and we'll go uh, get a new set of data and hold that static for you while you analyze that data. So that's a pretty uh, pretty handy tool for a power meter. And uh, the phaser plot, this is uh, the primary tool that I help customers with when they're trying to confirm that they've phased the installation correctly. And what does that mean? Um, you know, each CT terminal on the meter needs to be associated with a voltage and that process is often visualized as a rotating diagram called a phaser plot and normally uh, for industrial sites you would have a lagging power factor meaning that the currents would be slightly behind the voltage vectors in their rotation which is what's illustrated here in the image this tool is really helpful when you've misphased the meter because the dashed line currents, they usually end up uh, in the wrong quadrant, pointing to the wrong voltage vector. And this tool allows you to uh, hot plug those CTs back and forth until you have, have the image correct. And that is a nice thing about the meter is that you can make those corrections uh, on the circuit board while it's live due to the high voltage cover uh, safety. So that's, that is the phaser plot uh, tool. As the environment and building energy consumption and adoption of green technologies comes further into the market. We have uh, more and more interest in, I would say, introductory power quality features. So while our meter is not a power quality analyzer, it doesn't have the capabilities to do that level of, of uh, measurement in real time on the circuit board, when you use the uh, PSHD viewpoint tool, it has some processing capabilities that we're showing here, which is you can get a look at the voltage harmonics and the current harmonics uh, out to the 17th um, and it presents those in terms of fundamentals or, or raw current. So you know, this tool use in conjunction with the oscilloscope mode is, is really an effective way for you to understand sort of the nature of the waveforms that you're, that you're uh, trying to measure. And I think some of these slides that we have uh, at the end of this presentation have come from an installation best practices presentation that we put together. And I'll, I'll just kind of speak to those. Uh, well, what, 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 when things aren't going perfect, what tends to be wrong is just a handful of things that we see typically. Uh, I mean, IT issues is, is one that, that um, customers kind of need to overcome on, on their side. Uh, but when the meter is up and running, if the measurements um, are looking odd, these are, the, these are the three things that most often we see. Number one is uh, CTs are directional. Uh, dense CTs have an arrow that points in the direction from the panel to the load. If the CT is on backwards, that typically manifests itself in terms of what the meter reports as being a negative power, negative KW. Uh, the, the CT being on backwards does not typically uh, affect the power factor. So uh, if, you just, if you're looking at a CT or looking at a channel of data and it's reporting negative energy and you know that it's a load, it's not a source, uh, chances are that CT was installed in a reverse orientation. So it can be corrected physically at the CT and that's, that's sort of best practices if you can so that installers that come behind you or observers don't inadvertently change that CT once uh, because they may see that it's installed backwards. So if you can fix it at the CT, that's best. If you can't, you can actually fix it uh, at the meter end by swapping the color codes in the terminal. And if you've left the site, you can actually swap those uh, electronically through the configuration tool itself, which I can, I can show you. So there's a way to sort of correct data as long as you have access to the meter. 
Uh, the second, probably most common issue that we get is customers are looking at data that's misphased. So they've got the CT associated with the wrong voltage channel. And that usually has two symptoms. It usually has two channels out of the three, speaking of three phase circuits, that would be showing negative power. And you would typically have a very low power factor. Sometimes it's actually right around zero. A certain less than 0.55 would be our internal algorithms indication that something is misphased. So the best place to go confirm that would be to look at the, the phaser plot. The phaser plot uh, will show you which two need to be swapped. And if you don't have viewpoint HD uh, in the laptop with you, the LCD screen has a function called check installation that you can press and it will tell you the alphabetic element of the CT of the group that has a problem and then within that which CT it thinks is backwards. So that's the check installation feature. So uh, those can be corrected hot swap on the fly by pulling plugs out, CT plugs, and plugging them into a different spot. So rather than having our meter with screw terminals, they are pluggable connectors, which is uh, advantageous in this kind of application where you have many, many CTs and you may need to uh, swap a few of them to get the installation correct. And then thirdly, uh, this is kind of an, uh, an industry challenge, is that there's not just one definition for how to assign the numerical sign to the term power factor. Uh, and some uh, groups of folks, they, they use what we call the ANSI methodology, which is to assign a positive value to a lagging and a negative to a leading. Uh, there's another standard called IEEE, which just has the power factor follow the sign of the power. And since people are often concerned about power factor and they're looking at that, they, that, that sign throws them. So there is a, a way that the meter can, can be told to use one convention or the other to clear up um, sign uh, confusion. And this kind of thing, this is one of the wrap up slides we have, which is where can customers and installers go to get uh, help, get information about these, these products the technical uh, documents that, that come with these products are available in a couple locations. So for each order, Dent is supplying a thumb drive uh, with a what we're calling a media release. And the media release is a collection of documentation that's all been tested to work together. And that includes typically the Viewpoint HD application, the firmware versions that are current, uh, the latest register lists, the, rate, the latest manuals, et cetera. So, and there's some videos on that thumb drive, some how-to videos that you can watch uh, to give some helpful tips on how to configure the meter and do some troubleshooting. So that comes on the thumb drive. If, uh, if you don't have access to the thumb drive, uh, maybe you, know, you misplaced it or for some reason you don't have it, all that information is also available for download uh, through Dent's website. And uh, there's, in addition to the product videos about, about this product, there are other videos showing installations and panels and what that typically looks like out on our on our product video website. Uh, the, user man, the user manual is, is also available there. Um, and then I put a dash down for tech support. And this is really a strength of Dents, I think, is uh, the guy who does primary response for tech support sits in the center of the bullpen of engineers, and he is also our IT manager within Dent. Uh, so he is a great resource to reach out to to uh, help with IT configuration issues, uh, meter setup, troubleshooting. And if there's a question that, that he can't answer, uh, it's a very short reach to the development engineers that design this meter. So he can go get specific questions about behaviors or observations from the people that did the development work on a, on a pretty short reach. So I think that uh, that really makes our, our support pretty strong. Um, I think that was it. And then so I think that's the, the end of the prepared slides, and uh, I'm going to switch over and demonstrate the use of the Viewpoint HD uh, tool in live format here so you can kind of see what the customer experience would look like. Okay. So what we're looking at here is the Viewpoint HD interface. And I'll just kind of briefly show some of the features across the top of the title slide, and then we'll, we'll show some of the details of, of the power of this thing. 
Um, so looking at the title bar items where this meter is identifying itself through its system descriptor here, which is called the KMC demo with its serial number. Uh, it's saying that we have some uh, alarms set and pending that we might want to review. We have a button here called basic. And when I toggle that, the two modes are basic and extended. They don't have an impact on all pages, but on some of the pages uh, where there is some additional complexity to the registers, uh, the extended mode brings additional options for you to, or additional registers for you to look at and additional uh, computational power. So we say, you know, if you're just interested in kilowatt hours and you don't want to be confused by looking at whether things are, are net or positive or negative, the basic mode is essentially the meter reporting uh, conditions for most users who only have loads. Um, this little drop down menu here is where you access other pages within the application. And you can see under the basic mode, we have uh, three items that can report, and we have a dash line and some configuration items. If I hit the extended mode and come back and look at that again, it's saying, hey, well, now we have some new tools available Power Factor tools. This is the oscilloscope mode tools, and we have some additional uh, things to do in setup. And then we have uh, a little button over here. I want to just click that and point out what it does is this interface that we're looking at is just a Modbus host. And so the commands that are coming back and forth between the meter and this interface are via Modbus. So if you're writing your own program or you're writing a script and you're wanting to compare the information that you're getting to what's being reported in this viewer, that little help button I clicked will show you which registers this interface is using to query the data. So as I move my mouse around and hover over any object, it tells you both the Modbus address and the BACnet, BACnet object number for anything that I might hover over. So that's a really convenient way to go back and forth between the uh, developer world and the Dent tool to make sure that you're getting the same results that, that you're seeing on our screen. So great. So I, I'm, now I'm looking at I left the extended button on, and the top guy here is the power page. But before you typically uh, want to see the results, you're going to need to configure the meter in some way. So what I'm going to show you is, is how that's done. So I, I click here, and we're just going to go down to the first setup item under the dashed line, which is meter setup. So I click meter setup, and incidentally, I'm working with a, a PowerScout 12. So you see element groups. A, B, C, and D, and on the 48, you'd have 16 of those. I just did a 12 just to reduce the amount of visual information that we're sharing here. So that top line uh, KMC demo, this is where you would put in a system description that's used on every page so that you, you know where the meter was installed. That's your basic description. There's a few uh, items that are available for reference right here in the viewer. So this is asking you to select a service type, but if you're not sure what that means, you can click on the wire diagram button and it will say, oh, for a certain service type, this is how it's expecting you to configure an element. So that's a nice little quick reference. Here's where we talked about sign conventions and there's some multipliers you can add. Uh, but then when you get into the, the nitty gritty here, you're going to be down configuring each element individually. And this is really where this uh, element is strong. So it, and this, in our demonstration here, I have connected to element A, a small two feet of heater. So I might just type in heater as a description and come over here. And because I'm in my office, I, I, this is two phase power. I can click, this is a two wire, one phase device. I can turn off CTs two and three. I'm only going to be using one CT. I'm going to be selecting that voltage reference from line one to neutral. This is a 120 heater. I come over here and I click this drop down button and it's showing me an image of all the CTs that, that Dent has for sale. And so the one that I have installed on this heater is this little 50 amp guy. And when I select that, it pre-populates the range, it pre-populates the optimized phase shift and multipliers, et cetera. And then this little button over here is the one where you could invert that if you had connected this CT on backwards and no longer had access to it. You could, you could convert that. So once you've done a configuration, I've named it, I can just hit send that to the meter. Now I've configured element A. Element B, C, and D are currently, currently turned off. They're, they're marked as disabled. 
But if I wanted to go to the next element, I would come over here just as an example. Maybe, I, maybe this is a three phase, uh, four wire system. I would click that and then it's going to pre-configure almost everything in this uh, element for you. It knows that a four wire three phase Y would consist of an L1 reference, an L2 reference, and an L3 reference. So all that's left for the user to do is, is just find the CT they purchased. So let's say that I was looking at the building entrance. I might be interested in those flexible uh, row coil CTs. I would just pick the, the CT type row coil, go up here to the description, type in mains, send that to the meter. Now, any screen that I go to, we'll go back to power as an example. It's going to inherit those names. Uh, I don't have my heater turned on, so I'm going to reach over and hit the power button on the heater. Here in a moment, uh, we'll have some data coming in. So I, my heater is reporting uh, 180 watts. It's a little tiny desk heater, uh, 1.63 amps. Uh, but you can see all this data now is, is sort of making sense. We've got the voltage on line one to neutral. Um, I've got the current, and it's saying, you know, I've got channel one is in use, two and three are off, so it's reporting system information, which is the same as channel one. Obviously, in a three-phase system, this would be the averages of the phase. Uh, so that's pretty pretty powerful, pretty easy to configure. Uh, I'll just quickly go through the other configuration items, and then I'll show you the use of some of the analytics so we can see how we might uh, analyze our, our setup. So we've looked at meter setup. The next one is communication setup. So the the GUI is going to hide items that are not relevant to your selections as you go through this. So it, it's sort of defaulted here because it, it's talking to a meter that's already set up for RS-45. If I say, no, this is I want to change to Ethernet, and I click that, it's saying, OK, we're, we're moving all of the information about um, serial settings on the Ethernet. I want to say, no, I want to use a static address. I click off DHCP, I have a place to enter that information. So the interface is really intuitive, is that it's only showing you things that are relevant as you make choices. And over here on this side, you know, I could tell I want to do a BACnet interface instead of a Modbus interface. Once I make my, my choices, you know, here's the baud rate, et cetera, send that to the meter, and uh, it will inherit those new, new choices. back here and just reestablish. I told it to change protocols, and so it, it rebooted. The, when you make a protocol change on the processor, it reboots. So it just rebooted, and it woke back up on the USB connection, which is how I'm connected to the meter through a USB cable. Uh, so if we're looking at the dashed lines here. I'm going to skip the alarm page. I will just, we'll, we can look at it briefly. It's fairly busy, but you're setting uh, lows and highs for all voltages and all currents. And when those conditions are met, you get a, a status change, and there's a uh, relay that clicks on the board that you can read. So if I go back over, I just kind of skipped over to the advanced tab here. Uh, we have this kind of kind of a miscellaneous busy screen, but I'll just point you to some of the features that people do tend to use. Uh, the top right is where you would enter in any kind of pulse information. Well, who wants to do this? Well, this is people who might want to aggregate water consumption or natural gas consumption with the same timestamp as their energy data and have the meter have the aggregate uh, totals for those uh, building streams as well. This is where you would set that up. You put in the units, you know, right? it's, it's showing uh, VTUH that could be gallons or et cetera. The next section below is uh, download logged data. So I, I don't think we mentioned that, but the meter maintains a two month record on 15 minute intervals of energy so if you uh, if your RTU or your host system is down for some period of time for a reason and you want to patch that record up or, or collect that data, you can download that file. It's a comma separated values file of two months in duration, uh, every channel in the meter on 15 minute intervals. If you uh, wanted to upgrade the firmware, um, you would do that through this interface by pointing to a file and hitting the upgrade button. Uh, we tend to do uh, media release upgrades no more often than once a quarter, twice a year being more typical. And what's in those upgrades is some bug fixes, but more, more often than not, it's feature requests. So if there's a, a feature that you would like to see or a register that's not being reported that's important to you, if, if you report to engineering what you'd like to see, chances are we could make those available at the next media release. 
down in the bottom right, there's some security features. You can program the meter to be read-only or read-write permissible for users that are standing in front of it. We're talking about the LCD screen and the push buttons, and the web server can be locked out through, through these provisions. Uh, and then over here on the bottom left, we kind of have some tools for developers who want to check string conversions and floating point numbers and, and that kind of thing down here. And those are, those are all uh, under the advanced settings. So yeah, pretty pretty easy we think, uh, but be a powerful tool set to configure this meter. Primarily, you know, this is the page in which you can be doing most of your work. So let's just spend a moment back at the top uh, here. Uh, so we looked at power together. If we were to click it, at click on energy, you can see that because I have the extended button clicked, man, there's a lot of entries here. So this meter is capable of net metering. It's also capable of keeping track of energy flow in all four electrical quadrants. Uh, that's something that's important to some uh, advanced users and customers if you have cogen plants etc but that might be a screen in which you say no I, i'm really a basic user i click that and this just says okay and i've reduced everything down to one quadrant which is loads so this is going to be accumulated energy accumulated apparent power accumulated bars uh, on this screen with the basic mode you can hit the clear accumulated values and that will reset the meter why, why would you do that well, you would do that if you uh, want to synchronize yourself back to some zero point, maybe at the end of the month or at a year, uh, so that you don't have to keep track of the rolling totals over a longer period of time. Uh, that's where you would do that. Um, and let me go back to extended mode here. And then right below energy would be demand. This is you know, similar for customers who are billed both based on consumption and on uh, their, their demand or the maximum power draw. The meter keeps track of a 15-minute sliding window of the uh, current demand window, which is called present, demand present, and then the maximum uh, of, of its record, which is the, the peak demand. So that's how you, if you hit clear, that would, that would uh, go back to zero. So those are how you can keep track of, of peak demand. And now, uh, those, once we're down here past demand, now we're looking at more sophisticated analysis features uh, for the meter. Uh, I'll come back to power factor. We're going to go to waveform capture. So I showed you what that looked like uh, in a three-phase slide. So this is the actual heater sitting on my desk. We have voltage is the solid line and the current is the dashed line. Uh, it looks pretty sinusoidal. You see there's some sort of uh, slope changes to that current, which would make you tell you or which should indicate that it does have some harmonics. So uh, from there, we might say, oh, that's interesting. Let's go to the harmonic page and look. Click on that. Uh, here we we are reporting voltage harmonics across all three phases that the meter's hooked to. Uh, not much going on there. But down in current, you can say, oh yeah, that's interesting. So the, the meter is saying that it it reads 8.3 percent distortion on the current. Uh, it's primarily on the third harmonic and a small amount on the fifth, and that's reflective of that that shape that it's that it's shown. And then I'll click on the phaser plot quickly so you can see that it works in real time. Although I'm single phase power, there's really only one directional arrow to show you, and that is the voltage from, uh, from neutral over to uh, 100, zero degrees reference. And this is a heater with unity power factor, so there's a red vector that's underneath that black vector. But that's not what a normal installation would look like. A normal installation would be three phases, and there would be a lagging power factor that you could see. So that's that's how that, that tool was used. And then the one that we skipped over, I'll just quickly jump onto that. This is the advanced page for power factor. And power factor, as, as most people under, or use that term, is actually the apparent power factor. And the apparent power factor is, is actually the product of two other uh, power factor terms, one being the displacement power factor, that is the angle between the current and the voltage, and the third one being the distortion power factor. So if you have a waveform that has it's an active load of some kind, and maybe an SCR or high efficiency lighting circuit, you can actually end up with an interesting situation in which your power factor is low because it's distorted, not because it's off angle. So this page kind of um, alerts the user to say, okay, well, I have a, maybe I'm looking at a low power factor. Where is it coming from? Is it coming from a motor? Is it coming from an active load? This page can, can kind of sort that out a little bit. So I think that's really the, the, the 
key features that we wanted to demonstrate today uh, with the HD line and in concert with the viewpoint HD configuration uh, and analysis tool. Yeah. Uh, are there any questions that we might be able to answer while we're here? Uh, there is a question on uh, when you have two CTs and three turned off, are they still being factored into the LN average field? Yeah, CTs great question. And three so, off. Yeah. yeah, so no, things that are turned off are not included in the average. And where you might, where that might become an interesting one is you know, under meter setup, if I were to go pick like a, like your house is a three wire one phase system and it's gonna leave uh, channel three off and you'd be hooking up a CT between L1 and neutral and a second one to L2 to neutral. When it reports that average, it's not gonna uh, include the zeros that, that would make up channel three. Good question. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just seeing one other good one. Um, are there any future um, plans to do any kind of cloud or uh, access to a web portal or anything like that? Yeah, and that answer is yes. That is on our 2020 docket. Uh, we, we plan to have the meters do data push to Amazon Web Services uh, application and then have that data available to uh, what we call data brokers. Um, and we're still we're still collecting who those might be. But if you have a, if you're person asking the question has a favorite dashboard and they want to send a comment about what that is to Dent, we can make sure that we support the API for that dashboard. That's great. Awesome. Well, uh, I think that pretty much will do it. We're a little over today and that was a great presentation. I'm just going to take things back from here. Thank you guys so much. Uh, just wanted to remind everyone, as usual, as we end here, um, again, we thank Dent for giving that great presentation. Um, this will be available on our YouTube channel, uh, just like all of our other webinars that we present. Uh, so you can check those out on our YouTube. Uh, there's actually a webinars playlist where you can find all of these collected in one area. Uh, and then you can also find us on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, as well as Dent. And we want to thank everyone for attending uh, these webinars. It's been a great year of webinars, and we look forward to 2020 and all the uh, great content that we'll be bringing your way. So thank you guys again, and have a great December.